of the Nexus, Senate Bill 1014. This is the House's Bill of Rights, Michael Beloyu, in support, Hawaii Services Network. In support, thank you, Pass. Uh, yes, uh, we, suggest, uh, we suggested an amendment to the bill that would allow uh, houses persons to actually the right to refuse shelter or remain unsheltered. There are a lot of really good reasons why they uh, reject shelter uh, due to bad experiences within shelter. Uh, but once they refuse shelter, they are then criminalized or blamed for being houseless. Um, as if it were their excuse to um, sweep them from the sidewalks or wherever they are living. We feel that um, that's unjust. We also would recommend, and this is not in my written testimony, I'm sorry, but we would also recommend that uh, you remove all of the subsections under uh, Section 10. Uh, that would we, we, we do want to have the houseless person have the right to maintain and have access to their own savings account, but no one else should. And we are aware that there are some shelter services that provide this trust situation, which uh, we feel is in violation of Hawaii State Trust Law, HRS 412-8-103, um, which says, unless um, chartered as a trust company under this chapter or otherwise specifically authorized by the laws of the state, no person shall hold itself out to the general public as being available to serve as a trustee or trust company, whether or not for compensation. So uh, we strongly urge that you make that amendment, and if you pass it out and go to JDL, we'll, we'll also suggest the same. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify? Bart? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you want to jump a boat, please? <laughs> okay, now I'm speaking as an individual. Um, you have my testimony, I think it got in got a little late, I apologize for that. Uh, I want to congratulate the committee for taking this on and the authors for, for writing it and proposing it. Uh, it's a groundbreaking approach. Um, I have been moved by personal experiences with homeless people and I'm kind of emotionally withdrawing from that and moving to a level of sort of abstraction and, and philosophical thing uh, rather than touch those emotions that, that I feel. Others have been very eloquent and have brought that dimension to it. Um, I see this right to, uh, to shelter and right to be not persecuted as being homeless as arising from orientation that as a Democrat, um, I trace back to at least um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's Declaration of the Four Freedoms uh, in 1941 on the eve of World War II where he was trying to articulate not just the vision of the, of the New Deal in the United States but also uh, the basis for an alliance of democracies in the struggle against fascism, that we would uphold certain minimal rights and respect for our people. And these got incorporated into international law uh, after World War II. They were incorporated in the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, specifically the freedom from want. Uh, they inspired and are incorporated in the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. The United States has signed but not ratified these documents. Um, in the Hawaiian tradition, of course, we famously have the Law of the Splintered Paddle, and I will not uh, mutilate the language by reading it to you in Hawaiian. Uh, La Lani's not here, that's her obligation. Um, but let me give you an English translation here. It says, O people, honor thy God, respect alike the rights of people, both great and humble. May everyone, from the old people and women to the children, be free to go forth and lie in the road or by the side of the road without fear of harm. Break this law and die. Now this has been incorporated into our constitution. It's sort of an honorific nod. Nobody seems to take it seriously. Right. HPD has the badge on their badge, the splintered paddle, to remind them. But they are enforcing uh, inhumane policies against the homeless. I could uh, cite chapter and verse from the Christian Bible, but I'll leave that to, to others. Of the Christ is <laughs> talking about where I am, where you've turned me away, have you not fed me, you've not clothed me, you have, you have, uh, you have rejected me. Uh, and go to a more secular tradition, the great French writer Anatole France wrote somewhat ironically, the law in its majestic equality forbids the rich as well as the poor to sleep under the bridges, to beg in the streets, and to steal bread. Now why is it we continue to ignore these signposts that our ancestors have put out there to guide us in how we interact with each other, whatever tradition we're coming from. 
now it's not this body, it is the city council and the, the city government that has been promoting very retrograde and inhumane policies which criminalize human beings for the conditions which arise necessarily from being houseless and we have to stop this and if you can make progress here declaring we recognize the rights of homeless people or houseless people to not be persecuted that would be a great step forward and thank you for taking us on. Thank you. Passed really remind me of the laws in the 60s that prevented people from voting uh, just because of their color. And uh, you know, the stereotyping of the houses by the newspaper and by legislators is it's almost criminal. And, and, and so the police and the city workers treat them like just they're not human. And uh, we have videotape of the city workers and police coming and taking absolutely everything and throwing it in the dumpsters, including ID and medication, even though the city council said that wouldn't happen. And we've gone and, 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 and testified for the city council that it was happening. And they never said, well, we'll tell the police, don't do that. It continued to happen. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, reaffirming that these are human beings who have civil rights is incredibly vital. And I'll just tell you one quick story. For four years, we've been doing uh, potlucks and, and um, uh, music for the houseless, and we were there one evening, and it was just pouring rain, freezing cold, and this woman comes in with this dress that's completely drenched, this thin dress. The police had come and taken absolutely everything that she had and left her destitute. The whole, they say the reason for these laws is, oh, they'll make them go to the shelter. How is she going to go to the shelter at night after it's closed? And she had nothing, so we gave her something to eat, we gave her a cup of hot coffee, we played some music, we gave her a towel to dry off with, and she started feeling better. And then, you know, she finally went into the night. What happened to her, I'll never know. But this is what's really happening with these laws. And so this is real stuff. And, and, to, and to make it illegal to go to the bathroom and then make that, you know, a personal criminal for that, because they entered the park at the wrong time of night and can't afford to pay the fines. So, Thank you so much. And we really need to realize this is reality. It's not some theory. And, uh, uh, and there's hundreds of stories all of us could tell have been in all of us all these times. So thank you very much for this. Thank you. Terry Keyes and Sir Kurt. We have Doug Matsuoka. I would like to. Uh, Doug? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Aloha. 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 Um, my name is H. Doug Matsuka. I submitted testimony, but I won't uh, repeat it. I'm with a group called Hoi Gurla Video Hui, and we use a small, like, basically cell cams to document what happens on the street. And as Dave mentioned, we got, we got the video. Everybody's seen it, so, you know, it's not something that's secret. Um, I support SB 1014, uh, the Houseless Bill of Rights. Um, and I'm not going to repeat my testimony, but I did want to mention that uh, a few years ago I attended a ceremony that was about the reopening of Honolulu um, internment camp. That's where the uh, Japanese were imprisoned uh, in Kunia during World War II because they were Japanese. And there were a lot of dignitaries there. The mayor was there. Um, uh, one of the speeches was by the headmaster of the Buddhist Academy. And he noted that the pursuit of justice was a very noble thing, but there was something better, there was something higher even than the pursuit of justice, and that was compassion. Um, And he defined compassion as feeling with somebody, feeling what other people feel, and if you can feel that, that's the only way that human suffering will be alleviated. So to that end, I'm hoping everyone here, especially the lawmakers, can somehow experience what homeless people experience. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I hope you experience uh, sleeping on the sidewalk. And I've actually tried this uh, earlier last year. I tried three nights. I stayed on the sidewalk for three nights. This is separate nights, not contiguous nights. And you can't fall asleep. <laughs> you have to be totally exhausted. I got to do that. You know, um, your and your eyes got to be open. Um, I hope you experience defecating in your. You know, it's illegal to defecate on the sidewalk. 
there's no law saying you can't defecate in your pants. That's a kind of a loophole in the city and county law. I can't, I can't wait until the city passes a, another law. For your suffering, I hope you um, seek comfort in drugs and alcohol. Um, you know, the, the ironic thing is that the alcohol merchants were complaining about people peeing on the sidewalk. You can buy alcohol, you just can't pee on the sidewalk. Right? Um, I hope you finally line up a, a job interview and you get your job interview clothes, you know, set aside in your suitcase, and it's taken away by city uh, personnel during a midnight raid. You know, I, I hope you all experience puking your guts out all over yourself because you ate something that you knew was bad and would make you sick, but you couldn't help yourself because you were too hungry. <clears throat> I hope you try your best to maintain your human dignity, but fail, okay? I hope you seriously consider suicide, but you don't do it because you're too weak to climb up high enough to secure the end of the rope, okay? Um, now, I'm not saying these things to wish harm on anybody. In fact, I wish everybody here, I wish the lawmakers live a long life I hope you live, you know, to that age where it's a little bit hard getting around and that it's hard, you know, keeping track of days of the week. I think we all have parents or grandparents or relatives that have gone through that phase. Then I hope your pension company goes bust so that you have to develop street skills in your old age. Um, now, I wish these things, that you can experience these things, uh, not so you suffer, but because you're lawmakers. And you can say, you know, we've got to do something about this. this, this these are things that I mentioned aren't fiction. These are realities. They're happening right now as we speak, as we sit here. And this is an opportunity. You know, this is a chance. This is a chance for you guys to do something. So please support SB 1014. Thank you for your Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think we actually don't have to experience it and still are motivated to do what we're doing now. So thank thank you. you very much. Um, we have Reina Whiting and also Imoa Alliance and Karen Murray. Hi, Senators. Um, just for an effort of transparency, I do work at the Capitol. So just from the let everybody know. I hope that's okay. <laughs> so my name is Raina Whiting. I am the director on my free time of an organization called In the Streets. It's a homeless outreach group. Um, today I'm speaking to you though personally from my personal experience um, and why I think the Homeless Bill of Rights is important for the state of Hawaii. First uh, I wanted to go over the states that have um, previously considered the Homeless Bill of Rights or currently have it as law. So the states that are considering the Homeless Bill of Rights are California, Delaware, Minnesota, Missouri, Oregon, Tennessee, and Vermont. The cities, that, the cities that actually currently have a Homeless Bill of Rights are Madison, Wisconsin, and Baltimore, Maryland. And the states that currently have a Homeless Bill of Rights are Connecticut, Illinois, Rhode Island, and then in addition to that is Puerto Rico. So the current criminalization of our House of Sohana in Hawaii has proven that our leadership on the city level believes that houseless individuals have less rights than those folks that are housed. And I've experienced that on a personal level. I work with houseless individuals whose rights have been directly impacted based on the measures that have been passed on the city level. And while these measures were said to be applicable to all individuals, it is clear that they were intended for the houseless individuals, as you guys know. So I've, in my experience, I've worked with high school students who have had their school books taken in rates and who were unable to receive their diploma because they were unable to pay for those school books. The city has no regard for them having those school books as, or their school supplies, their backpacks as basic necessities. A homeless young woman that I work with regularly <coughs> was often holding her urine overnight because of all the tickets her and her family had received by using the Beach Park parking lot after hours. The, the bathroom is closed between 10 a.m. and 6 a, 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. and it's a hundred dollar ticket if they get caught using that restroom. Hundred dollars. So after a couple of those, um, what are you what are you supposed to do? So 
especially if you have the money to pay for it, you'd probably be housed. So because she was holding her urine, she received a bladder infectant, uh, infection that later turned into a kidney infection, which she wasn't able to get to the hospital in time. When I found her, she was literally crippled over in pain, um, took her to the emergency room, and we're very lucky uh, that that condition was caught before it caused irreversible damage to her kidneys. But this is something that happens on a regular, it's not just her, um, but they are so scared to use the restroom uh, in fear of receiving that $100 ticket. I've also experienced a number of raids in the effort to document them and the things that the city is doing that are actually breaking their own laws. One raid, um, I was also a life dog. I decided I was going to spend 48 hours on the streets um, to document what it's like to be homeless. So on May 6th of last year, the first night that I was supposed to be homeless, at 3 a.m., 3 o'clock in the morning, um, the city came to do a raid. And a raid is really traumatic. And I was staying in a park where there was um, all ages. There was a 75-year-old man and there was you know, a family with children, multiple families with children. At 3 a.m. they came, they roped off everything, and they come like really quickly they rope off everything and everything that's inside of those ropes gets taken. And they are supposed to tag it, put it in butt bins, and then you're supposed to be able to retrieve it at a later date. However, that's not what happened for everybody's stuff that night. A 75-year-old native Hawaiian man was left. He only had a backpack to his name and had his basic necessities in it. Um, but he was left with just the clothes on his back. And inside of his backpack was, was his very much needed heart medication, a photograph of his late sweetheart, he called her, um, and you know his toothbrush and a jacket. And he was left there with one shirt and a pair of pants, and that's it. That's all he had that night. So as thing, and in addition to that, there was a family there that actually ended up staying in the park, a family of four, a mother, father, and a three-year-old and a four-year-old daughter, and they were left with nothing as well. They all their children's stuff, they, both of the kids were in preschool, and both of those parents worked. So they would leave their stuff in kind of packed up and then go to work and come back. So though that family, every single thing was taken. So they had, they had nothing to send their kids to preschool with the next morning. All their food, all their water, everything was taken. The friend that I was staying with that night was a homeless individual himself. And he had his tent taken, his backpack, all of his food and all of his water. His EBT card was taken. Um, how, is it, how is he supposed to, eat? supposed to eat after that? I, though, told the police and the city officials that I was not houseless, but I was documenting it, and the city officials let me walk away with everything that I had, every single thing. So then as everything settled down that night, um, and I watched that 75-year-old Native Hawaiian man lay down in the grass, and then about you know, 15 feet away was mom and dad with their three-year-old and four-year-old daughters cuddled together with nothing. These are the reality of, we don't believe that homeless people have rights in the state of Hawaii. And as a result of the things that have happened from the city ordinances, this is what is happening. And I think that a, a homeless bill of rights will stop that sort of thing, or at least give them um, some sort of, of acknowledgement that they exist. So. In finishing, I just want to say that our state is not treating our houseless ohana equally in any way. They have proven time and time again that houseless persons' rights are not rights are not as valued as those of tourists and housed individuals. As the current laws and practices stand, there is nothing protecting the rights of houseless ohana and keiki. The bill will not fix all of the issues, but it is a step in the right direction to acknowledge that these people, our houseless ohana, have rights too. So I ask you guys, as the chair and committee, um, to pass this law. And I hope that it out here. So thank you. Thank you, Rena. If I don't think we have your what you read from your phone. Oh no. So if you could please forward it to us, that would be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Um, there was two of these books. Oh, more than that. Okay. I think more. We have Karen Murray. Hello again, I'm Chris Cockle representing the Amoa Alliance speaking in support of this, this bill for reasons that uh, Raina and Bart just beautifully articulated. Uh, we just wanted to mention three amendments. 
uh, that are in the written testimony. We apologize for something to get late. Um, first, we suggest adding an additional subsection to address potentially exorbitant shelter fees, which we understand, for example, in IHS range from $90 to $300 per night for people who are indigent. Uh, we propose the following language to enact this amendment, the right to participate in any emergency homeless shelter or program without financial harm and to the return of any fees paid for participation in an emergency homeless shelter or program. We also encourage you to address the lack of a substance of appeals process for evicted shelter residents by adding an additional subsection to read the right of access to information about the rules for participating in a homeless shelter or program, a notice of cause upon eviction from a homeless shelter or program, and a process for appealing an eviction from a homeless shelter or program. And finally, with CAFI and Pacific Alliance to Stop Slavery, we urge you to delete subsection 10B from the bill regarding safe shelter savings programs because participants in these programs have been routinely denied access to basic information about their accounts and therefore the ability to make sound financial decisions based on a complete and accurate knowledge of their fiscal circumstance. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Group, uh, there's three people. Please come forward, all of you. I'm sorry. I'm really going to hear this, right? Mrs. Clark, Karen, Murray. Okay. I, you were the next person. Oh, good. Okay. Okay, um, thank you for this bill. It's, it's really needed at this time. Um, I'm, I'm in support of this bill. <coughs> Even though it falls short of turning back, the right to reside in public parks at night has park closure hours. Hopefully it will adequately undo the harm of the sit and lie resolutions. It's unfortunate we find ourselves needing to provide a separate specific bill of rights for the houseless um, because supposedly the bill of rights protects us all. Um, yeah, this demonstrates that the fabric of our communities are so deteriorated that we consider the vulnerable to be prey. The Bill of Rights should already be standing for all. Instead, um, there should be laws against hoarding of property at a time when land has unnaturally become commodity. Um, so, um, and I have, a, a, that, that was from my um, written testimony, but um, I would like to also add that um, people naturally form communities, such as the organizing of people that happened at Wai'anae uh, Boat Harbor. Um, and um, th that is reminiscent of old fishing villages that used to be there at, at different places that were, were undone by progress. Um, and I think that this type of organize, or organizing of people is um, a natural way of, of forming society and um, should be a, considered a part of the solution and supported rather than um, rated. Um, let's see. Um, <coughs> I would like to also add another um, story that I um, experienced that I experienced. Okay. Yeah. Um, when um, Bill 54 came about, Okay, um, I was at Occupy at the time, um, supporting Occupy, I was a, one of the <coughs> but um, a policeman came up to me and said, just wait until we pass Bill 54, in a very threatening voice. So we knew, we knew <coughs> who, who these bills were targeted um, and were being passed for. It was no secret. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. There were two others. Colin Kippen, and I'm with the Hawaii Interagency Council on Homelessness. And uh, I don't think this bill is necessary. And I'll tell you why I don't think it's necessary. Every speaker who has spoken to you today has articulated a set of violations that to me clearly, clearly <coughs> violate the Bill of Rights violate the United States Constitution and violate the Constitution of the State of Hawaii. Every piece of legislation that is passed has got to pass muster on the Constitution, under the Constitutions. And I can tell you this, we all 
have a protective bubble around us. That bubble is our rights. And it applies to us whether we have brown eyes or blue eyes, whether we're Hawaiian, whether we're Portuguese, whoever we are, whether we're houseless or whether we're not. And what I hear, which is to me so frustrating, is that there are tools available so much more powerful than any legislative act that you will make and you will take that will have to answer to the Constitution. Because this bill, if someone were to challenge this bill, saying that it violates my constitutional rights, that's, this bill would fall if it did. Just as these ordinances and these statutes should fall too. So, to all of the people who are here, some of who I'm sure are extremely surprised as to what I'm saying right now. I just want you to know that those tools are there. They need to be used because that is what it means to have these rights in the society we live within. So I want to tell you too that there is hope. The city's property ordinance fell to a constitutional challenge because it violated due process. And some of the things that were said today here could well be the basis for an action in the future, especially if it's been documented. So I can tell you, I say that, you know, let's, 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 let's use that tool that all of us have, and that's our inalienable rights under the Constitution of our state and the United States and the Bill of Rights. Thank you. Thank you. sure you have it then. Um, so constitutional rights, human rights, civil rights, we need to keep that in check for everyone. And we need to challenge uh, racism. What we have right now <coughs> is setting a precedent, uh, not only for the island of Oahu, but for the, sky, the entire state of Hawaii. And I think that, yes, uh, we do have a lot of recourses to be able to fight, you know, um, the ordinance is in place, but until we get to that point, a lot of people, a lot of lives are going to be suffering and paying a very high price. And I think that when you talk about legislation and when you talk about policy making, you can work in two directions uh, to create policies that harm people or create policies that actually help them. And you're in a position where you can actually help. Um, for the legality piece of this and for additional help, um, we've been working very closely with the National Law Center on Poverty and Homelessness in uh, Washington, and Attorney Eric Tars uh, have offered his unconditional support uh, to be able to help the Senate with whatever is needed with the wording and uh, uh, to get forward with this movement if it's needed. I want to close. Uh, my statement with a story that's very brief, uh, but it happened and at a micro level to help you keep in heart and mind why it's important you know, to really act on this. Uh, so this is a situation that happened in Brazil in 1993, um, where 87 homeless children were shot by the police and local business uh, men and women from the business district who just mm. got fed up with their existence. I'm sorry to interrupt, okay. but if, if um, I will wrap it up, we, uh, if we don't yeah, I will wrap everything up, then we won't be able to vote. That's it. Okay. So I really would like to get to the thank you. I'll wrap it up. The point of the story is, and this is well known, uh, 87 lives were lost, you know, human rights that were infringed, and because we didn't have uh, enough people to say enough, you know, and to overturn uh, bad policy making, please do what, you know, what we're supposed to do here. Uh, very strong support. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. There was one other person that needed to testify. No? Okay, thank you. We're going to recess and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we heard a bunch of bills the last two on uh, homeless issues. <clears throat>
them good testimony by a bunch of people. I received a message from Annabelle Murray saying she wants Karen Murray to testify on behalf of the Murrays from now on. <laughs>